Page one. Hey, how's it going? Going pretty well. How are things with you? Good. Yeah, it's very hot here, like in Sweden. It's 27 degrees, so it's, we are melting. Oh, that's not good. Well, we're having our uh, probably most serious bout of uh, Canadian wildfire bad air here. Oh. Yeah, I think the smoke is going to US, isn't it? Yeah, it's been intermittent. Like there was earlier this month, it was it wasn't great, but it was okay. I think today, like the air quality is somewhere in the like 160 or 190. It's almost 200, um, which is in the unhealthy range, which was entirely different. Yesterday was really good, so it's just kind of hit here today, pretty bad, and it's fairly pretty smoggy. I mean, not insanely but you know you can you can look and tell yeah where are you i'm just outside of cleveland ohio oh are you getting hit by the canadian wildfires yeah it's been intermittent over the last month i think boston and new york and philadelphia had it a lot worse um, but today it seems like we're getting a, a good chunk of it. So it wasn't bad earlier this week. It was still pretty much in the green, but today it's almost 200 is the air quality. So, oh, geez. Yeah. So it's a little, little, little smoggy, a little smoky. All right. Getting that. No, no pass. Who do we have? Oh, we got a crowd today. Um, trying to get the notes up here, uh, unless you already have them, Terry. Yeah, everyone's filling in, I believe. Arg, I lost my pencil bookmark very carefully. Let me send you a link. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I just had to find the window. Okay. I apologize. I am unexpectedly long distance working away from home so in Boston. All right, so it looks like we're going to talk mainframes today. Do we have, just for curiosity, do we have anybody here who's internationalization? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think Moise and Victor, they were interested in translation efforts. Yeah, uh, for the French. Oh, okay. All right, well, then why don't we make sure that we reserve some time uh, for, for both topics? Okay. Yep. All right, so where are we? When, when last we left our heroes, uh, we had um, the preliminary sort of outline for the mainframe doc. I put some comments in there. Um, come on now. Um, I haven't had a chance to see if those comments had been addressed. If there's, uh, if we wanted to identify, you know, a um, a set of future actions if we wanted to start to transition this into a, a preliminary pull request and start editing from that perspective. You know, how are people feeling as far as wanting to proceed in order to move, move the needle on this? Well, I think what we needed really was a, a, a white paper that was focused on, you know, what, what are the specific challenges in in that space so what's what's different from mainframe compared to uh, you know a standard continuous delivery approach right. and what are the recommendations in in that space 
Right. My, my question was more logistical. I was like, do we want to leave this in a Google Doc form or do we want to, you know, have a branch to, to, to have sections, you know, what, what, what can facilitate uh, better contributions at this point? For what we did for this, the uh, secure supply chain, we basically did the white paper in Google Doc, but that was driven by David Bendery. So um, th this seems to be a little yeah. bit more of a crowdsourced effort. And for this, like if we are going to uh, a PDF type of white paper, I believe the creative team prefers uh, Google Doc. John, please okay. correct me if I am mistaken there. Um, probably, although we could probably make it into, I, I don't know, you, what is sort of the source formatting you're at right now? Is it Markdown? Right, right now it's a very, very light, yeah, the Markdown in the, in the website. Luckily with the joys of Pandoc, we can make Markdown into anything. So, um, yes. yeah, so I, I think it's fine what you're using now. We can, we can help get it over. Okay. So, so I think where we're at then is, you know, who's going to take uh, principal authorship um, to, to drive the content to get to the point where we can finalize review and then get it published, I think is, is the key thing. And how can we support, you know, what can we do to support that, that person or persons? So I don't know, John or Michael, y'all have... Some thoughts around this? I mean, from a subject matter expertise, Michael is going to be probably the best person from the open mainframe project side of things. Um, I'm kind of more in a role of facilitating here. So, I mean, I'm happy to support in any way I can, but Michael's going to be a better SME than I will. All right. Michael? Yeah, so from, from my perspective, I'm, I'm happy to continue helping with the effort. I don't know that I have capacity to write a white paper um to be to be honest at the, at this time um i also transitioned into a new role within my organization which is you know additional challenges because i have more more of my day-to-day -day, uh workload on that not that i so like i'm willing to contribute to this as i as i can um and leave comments but even when you know if i had principal ownership there's a few few issues here that are preventing us from uh from moving forward one is engagement from others on the mainframe side to contribute to this document. Perhaps that can be driven through open mainframe TAC would be my suggestion, see if yeah. others could be engaged. Two is folks have, um, you know, we even heard it on, on this call um, a little bit about uh, opinions on strategically the angle at which the white paper would be written. And we could write a white paper. In fact, if the white paper was written the way it's written now, it'd be... Um, it'd be in opposition sort of to Terry's comments about showing how um, it's different for the mainframe. Because really the, the story that the draft was intended to tell was how mainframe can be integrated into the space. And it's like any other platform, not focused on any differences, more focused on similarities. So if you were doing uh, the deployment of an application that was full stack, it could be very similar across mainframe and distributed. I was sort of trying to tell that story versus focusing on the differences well, if, if that makes sense i mean if it's truly not different then do we need the white paper i guess is yeah, the question true. but i think there's probably a category i think what terry's driving at is that there's a category of things that need to be accounted for but that once you have those things then it is as everything else and um as as the narrative that you're trying to drive towards right? if you had like a baseline white paper on how it's done in the distributed world from the CD Foundation, we could compare and contrast. I think I'd asked for that document. I'm not sure if it ever, ever came up, but um, that'd be another angle. You know, I think uh, in general, it's more of an information lacking information in the general world, right? I mean, you go to you go to these client shops and they're running a distributed team and they're running a mainframe team, and you can now use Jenkins on the distributed side, for example, to drive mainframe workload. And there's a lot of initiatives where like the mainframe portion of the organization, they're just left out because, oh, it's mainframe. We don't understand mainframe, right? It can't be connected. But I mean, it's API enabled and you can drive stuff uh, over there. It's just left out of the, that's more of what I've, I've seen when I visited places is just left out of the conversation is, is the problem. Um, 
because folks don't have experience in mainframe, they don't know about it. So they don't pull it into their, their initiatives, um, which you'll see similar things happening here on like the software supply chain security side. You mentioned, I just bring that up. You mentioned a, a white paper was written, written for that, right? There's, there's web servers that run on USS on the mainframe. And they should be subject to the same uh, software supply chain security procedures as anything else, any distributed product. In fact, maybe even maybe even more so, right? Because you could have Java services running on USS that have log4j in it, for example, and that you know that could pose a pose an issue. Um, you also have the same thing, like as far as even beyond like just software supply chain security with like dependencies and things. You also have things like, you know, has this particular asset that I'm going to deploy to my system, has it been tampered with? Has somebody modified the file as well? It's been sitting there before I actually deploy the software. Right, the same principles that are being adopted in the distributed world and like from the results of the recent executive order on software supply chain security, they're also relevant to the, to the mainframe space. Um, but I think if we don't bring focus to it, um, cause there's, you know, in general in the industry, right, there's a little less attention to mainframe, um, for the overall workforce, there's less folks working on mainframe, even though it supports a lot of economic activity. Um, so we just highlight how those things are, are, uh, you know, really applicable to, applicable to mainframe. I think, I think that would be good. You know, I'd say if you go look at the state of mainframe today across the ecosystem, you probably see more manual activities just because it wasn't brought into this you know, automation first culture uh, that we have on the distributed side. But I think we're turning the corner on that a little bit. I, I see that changing. Certainly, certainly within in Broadcom, it, it's changed. We do a lot, a lot of automation first type approaches. I mean, another, another, another key aspect of the narrative is also is that there, it's often a hybrid scenario, right? Yep. I mean, you can, I think IBM Cloud now enables um, access to power mainframes in in cloud form which is kind of cool they can't do that for z series right for as an example so i think there's that um that's another aspect that if you're in this realm it's a hybrid scenario and here in the hybrid whether it's mainframe or not if it's you know local data center or whatever um there's there's some overlap there that i don't know that we've touched on specifically but that could be another engagement opportunity that might be actually an interesting way to think about it because I mean, it, kind of hearing from what I'm hearing from this group here, a lot of the initial onus, it sounds like around a potential white paper collaboration is a differences aspect. And I think, and Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, and I think I heard this from what you're saying, a real better interesting focus, at least from a mainframe perspective is a similarities because the, the common narrative is they're just completely different animals. You can't use the same tools, you can't use the same processes. And this is driven through pretty much any enterprise that's using mainframes, except for a handful of very forward thinking ones. And the more that it can be driven from an education, not just from the mainframe side, because I think a lot of those people won't get it, but from the broader IT in, which is where I think the validation from a group like this and the CD foundation really come in handy is a, a way to sort of move that narrative forward is they're not different. And the hybrid approach is where these organizations tend to be willing to go because you want to have sort of a similar, um, you know, deployment environment for an entire application that might have like multiple tiers of distributed IoT, um, cloud and, you know, mainframe as well. Um, and I guess, Michael, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong on any of that, but that's sort of what I've captured from previous yeah, no, that all makes sense. That all makes sense. I was, I would say in addition, as far as like how they're, if if you ever think about how they're different, those differences are closing every day. Like sometimes the advent of things on mainframe is a little bit behind and won't be, it won't be there day one. You had containerization on distributed platforms for a while, We're starting to see containerization on ZOS, like different specific tech technologies. If I mean, um, but my understanding of the white paper too, as far as similar and differences, it was really talking about the flow. It was abstracted away from the technologies. So as far as the flow, I think, yeah, they're pretty similar, can be pretty similar. Um, you... So uh, let's, let's think about this in terms of audience strategy. So the, the people who are coming to the continuous delivery best practices guide, are there because they want to know what are the best known methods for doing this in a given situation. 
So what we have to present to them is the overarching technology agnostic methodology so that they can understand how they should be thinking about the problem before they get to the specifics of their scenario. Um, so for, for most of that, we, we, we aren't differentiating between any given target platform. So we're just saying, you know, this is how you think about the problem. This is how you need to decompose what the work that you're doing uh, in order to follow a continuous delivery methodology. Uh, but then at some point, we want to be able to call out specific functional domains where you might have questions about, well, how does this apply to me in my situation with this technology stack? So that's where we're thinking about taking the mainframe stuff and any other of these context specific things. A good example is AI and machine learning, because that's another area where everybody thinks it's completely different. And no, it's not. It's mostly the same, but there are additional challenges that exist in that space that you have to take account of in order to be able to integrate into a single overarching uh, methodology. So, so I think that's where, where we are with this, is we're saying, how, how can we take this subject matter and then knit that into um, the narrative for best practices without needing to, at every stage, specifically call out um, open mainframe or any other te given technology um, and how you would do it in, in that context. So I think it makes sense from our perspective to say, look, here's the overarching methodology, but then here's the domain specific stuff where you've got challenges that you need to be aware of, uh, but which are not necessarily big issues if you approach them in this way or that way. It, it, it's making me wonder, um, going back to Michael's point, um, I don't know that we actually have a unified PDF white paper in that way. It's kind of, it's it's the website, right? It kind of represents all of the yeah. things that we're working on. But I'm wondering if, you know, we continue to kind of enhance that and, and the mainframe stuff becomes more of the community example build up like you might Michael you were saying like oh you can you know use Jenkins to manage these workloads in either a, a sole mainframe or in a hybrid scenario it's like we could get a case study that documents here's what here's how that was set up right we've been wanting to do that for a while we haven't been very successful in getting people willing to contribute um their example workload so maybe that's a, a better approach that you know kind of takes those two things in conjunction but we I think still we've got we got two Sorry, we've, we've got two places where we want to fit this in, really. The, the community section, the intent of that was for individual projects to be able to say, OK, here's how we do it with our project. So it's a case of saying, you know, here's how you would do continuous delivery with Jenkins X. Um, and so that would be an opportunity to do, say, an open mainframe specific piece in in there but then we also have the domain specific section under learn um, which is where we want to say here's here's an application domain that's a little bit different and so here are the challenges and the ways that you need to think about this generically in in that space without referring to specific projects or technologies so um so if you like anything that's in the domain specific part is part of our core our best practices anything that's in community is here's how people have done it practically using a technology or a project that sounds very intriguing that doesn't help again going back to the 
I think Fatih's goal, which is to have you know downloadable white papers. I think this is a this is a little bit orthogonal, and not to say that we can't do it, but um, this is a slightly different direction. Um, okay, hang on, I'm capturing some some action items here, and and my, I think Michael or John, one of you mentioned there was an open mainframe tech. Uh, I'm assuming it's a, a technical meeting. Is um, do we have information on when those are? Um, they're on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. Um, I mean, we're happy to, you know, if you all would want to come and kind of present a little bit of the idea of what you'd want to do, we can get you on the agenda for that. Um, but that's basically sort of think of that as sort of our technical oversight group um, across like all of our projects and other sort of technical work. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to think, you know, from from Michael's point, uh, he doesn't you know doesn't have the capacity to to take lead on this so let's you know let's engage and see if we can get somebody else that we can partner with and bring on board um i'm happy to i mean i don't know where the meetings are um i'm north america terry's a mayor but i'm i'm happy to come you know introduce us and see if we can get some volunteers to because we you know i i don't have any particular domain expertise though so in my new role i'm starting to learn Oh, there you go. There you go. Turns out MongoDB runs on IBM mainframes, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually I could bring some domain expertise, but I that's very nascent. <laughs> yeah. See, everything's connected, right? It's yeah. just, <laughs> Small world. Small world, it is. Yeah. <laughs> just I want to I want to add something about the PDF. Why I am uh, talking about PDF a lot because this is a feedback I directly received from few uh, people like mainly the people on management positions, they are uh, happier if they can download PDF, put on their iPads and read them on airplanes For rather sure. than looking at websites or GitHub repos and so on. That's why this is a feedback I heard a few times from different people. So, And for mainframes, I guess uh, such people are part of our target audience, isn't it? We need to influence the management as well, not just the application developers. Yeah, no, and I certainly wasn't suggesting that we don't do one. I was just saying that where we're starting to go for some of these things are not uh, white paper friendly and we'd have to create an additional um, formatted document. Um, uh, John, do you have a, a link that you could drop in the chat maybe for um, for the open mainframe meetings? Yes, I can. Um, I can. Yeah, if you happen to have it handy, I mean, I could probably find it if I spelunked around. But yeah, I have, I have ten more meetings after this one. <laughs> join, join, join the club. Um, yeah, I'll put a, a link here that has some of the information um, about it. If I can find my chat. Hey, one one other thought here too, John, is like the attack would get us to leadership in certain areas. Yes, but the um, I almost wonder if this goes eventually to like the. Zoe Technical Steering Committee, where you get access to folks who are a little bit, a little bit closer to the code, and can talk about some of some of this a little bit in more detail. That might not but, be a bad idea if there's good interconnection points with that. I mean, I, I think it's something to kind of circulate through a lot of our communities. Zoe tends, like you said, tends to be the more deeper and wider, where a lot of our other communities are a little bit shallower. So, um, or or which, or whichever. I just mentioned that because I had brought this up on the tech couple months ago and uh i didn't get much much engagement i assume that's because folks capacities are full there so i wonder if, if we got to a tsc we might have more luck in finding folks who had had available capacity i i think we yeah i think we tackle both and maybe we could get it on that agenda as well or just at least mention that um i think okay. is there information about that on this page or is, no I don't see one That's there different. isn't it's a different I'd, I'd have to dig that one up because I just I'm not as familiar with the process of getting on those meetings all right well if you want to drop that into the slack channel um, yeah you know Terry and I have limited availability but we can happy to yeah. at least show up once and I think you know I, I know you know I, we can also kind of help really you know get some interest I mean from my perspective on these things the heart the the even though it sounds trivial, the easiest thing is to get writing support, um, you know, because either, you know, we have, you know, marketing folks on our side, they can help with writing, we have resources, they can help with that. The hard thing is the SME support. So if we can find ways to at least leverage the SMEs in such a way that like we can garner that insight, and then we can kind of help work to tell the story and, and things around it, I think that would be best. Um, and if you all sort of have a I don't know 
it sounds like from what we're creating here, it's not necessarily of the template that we've you, you all have went before. I'm wondering if it's slightly different, but it might be good, or maybe it is. I don't know. I'm, I'm not as familiar with some of the work outputs yet, but I mean, um, the important thing is that we get the content, and then yeah. then it's just a matter of formatting, right, okay. and organization. So, you know, we we start with getting that that Google Doc fleshed out, and then we can figure out what to do with it. So I think, and I think there's again, there's two things there, which is you know, kind of this over, where I just lost this stupid thing again. There it is. There's the, you know, I think Terry made a great suggestion about, you know, having something that's in our learn hierarchy and then, you know, maybe start to identify some potential for the community con the project contr contributions or the, you know, the implementation contributions. Uh, and then we can have like a, you know, a secondary that, you know, takes all of those chunks, puts them together to the white paper for, for the plane ride for FATI. Um, and that's that's just a matter of you know content work. Um, yep. Okay, so uh, and John, you're you're going to try and dig that out for me. Which uh, part? Sorry, the, the, the TS. Oh, SMB. for the Zoe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I will look here in the background. Um, I should be able to. I should be able to hook, hook you up there. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I'm, have, I'm also, if you have those on uh, calls, John, I have capacity to join those and help with positioning. I also have capacity to help with the SME bit uh, somewhat. I can make that happen. I just don't have the capacity to write the whole white yeah. paper. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would imagine you and every S SME we're going to pull are going to be somewhat in the same boat. I mean, like okay. I said, I think, I think the biggest thing we're just going to need guidance on is like, like Terry was saying, is just like getting content but then i think organizational structure and then we can help bring in writing resources to to flush it out better okay yeah. right. what, I, what i'm trying to manage here is the overall amount of effort because yeah. if we're if we're going to explain um continuous delivery in the context of mainframe well first you've got to explain continuous delivery so if we're going to host that, then that part needs to be in line with the best practices that we are publishing. Okay. So what I'm trying to avoid is a situation where we write a white paper about continuous delivery um, and then have to go through and spend two or three months editing it to make it align to, um, to best practices. If actually all we really need to do is focus in on what's what's the really important stuff for mainframe and then we can think about how we potentially do an export of our overarching information package to to give that view of what our best practices methodology is plus how that has implications on mainframe because that should be a you know a, a lot smaller chunk to bite off is if we just focus on the the mainframe bit will I mean, save under, a lot of effort. Under learn, we have a category we haven't fleshed out yet, um, which is the domain specific practices. So I don't know, Michael, if you've had a chance to kind of go through some of that content. Um, here it's, uh, let me drop the link in the notes. Uh, um, current. I'll put it in the chat too, just so it's easy. So I was looking at this and like maybe Terry, the you know the mainframe stuff could go under domain specific a category. Yeah, that's what that's what the original intent was for, yeah. for it to go in there. Yeah. Yeah, I had forgotten about that section, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember this now. And so if if Michael, if for example, if you took a pass or we found someone who took a pass and kind of looked at the the current content that we've been developing, like does this resonate? Right, and then that, and then we have a, a section where we can add, you know, any sort of mainframe specific things, or, or maybe it'll be an opportunity to do a hybrid discussion of which mainframe would, would, um, be able to benefit from, depending on how we want to label it, uh, and then the white paper could basically be a dump of all of the content into a single document that we could PDF, right? So something like that. Yeah, and I, you know, from our perspective, usually those, those set, subsections, are typically one to two hours worth of work um, and a little bit of review so it's 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 not a major piece of writing and editing work it's a 
it's a very straightforward couple of SMEs giving a brain dump in, in that section. Yes, can we make this be not scary? Is <laughs> a good is a good goal. <laughs> not not scary. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So we have some preliminary action items uh, for this. Do you, do you have an? Do you have an example of another domain specific practices document that was filled out by something else you we, mentioned we, like no, this AI? Is, or... This yeah, we we don't yet. So this okay. this could be the inaugural. Um, well, there's the the yeah. ML ops stuff. So the, the machine learning and AI stuff is is, is, is a, a, a broader example of that type of problem. So we it's discussing it to our site yet. Yeah, it's in it's it's in there, but it's not under that domain specific piece, I don't think. Um, oh, where did that go? All right. Well, if you can, if you could, I don't remember where that is. If you could find that, Terry, and just drop the, a link, a direct link to it, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, we hit the 30 minute mark. Uh, we have some action items for mainframe. Are there any lingering, any, any lingering things that we want to make sure to touch on? So otherwise, I want to make sure we have a chance to, to talk translations. No, I appreciate all, right. all kind of helping get this back on the uh, agenda here. Uh, definitely excited to work with y'all and drive this. Yeah, I, it's. Uh, I apologize. Poor Terry has been kind of carrying the load a bit, um, so I'm trying to step back up and uh, provide more more help here. Um, yeah, let's let's plan on touching. Uh, let's let's plan on um, getting some engagement with the Open Mainframe Project so we can get some more solicitation for resources and touch base next time, or maybe maybe a month out if we think, given everybody's schedules, maybe two weeks is too fast to report back on this. But let's plan on uh, within the next month, um, seeing if we can identify some contributors. Okay, that sounds good. And if you have an example, uh, if you do find that example with the, the AI ML piece, if you could send, send me that. I just feel like if, if there was, I it, saw how it was applied to another one. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um, and then if we're all done with mainframe, I think I'll I'll, I'll drop off the line then as well. Yeah, so, thank you. Right. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You, Michael. Thank right, you. I have to ask you really quick. Is that your actual background? It is. It is. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> got, got the got the whole uh, old Mac collection going on, all one hundred percent working too. Wow. Okay. Well, my first computer was a was a was a Mac Plus. Oh, so I, over there on, yep. Well, over this is a classic shoulder. too. So it's sort of like the reincarnation of it a little uh, bit. Okay. Same form factor. It's a fun form factor. So I've, I had, I had two floppy drives, so I didn't have to eject the application disc in order to save, you know, that's that was, awesome. that's it had a megabyte of memory, man. <laughs> that is, that is awesome. That is awesome. Right, that was making me really happy to see that. I was hoping it was actually your office and not like a Zoom background. <laughs> no, that's, that is, that is the real deal back there. All right, cool. So the one on, the one on our left, your right, that was in uh, our lab in high school. It's called the Mac oh, Lab. Yeah, I <laughs> is that the one everybody yeah. turned into a fish tank? Yeah, kind of I, maybe. I <laughs> yeah. I, the thing is to date myself, I remember my first job in college was unboxing those eras of IMAX. <laughs> so. Good times. Good times. Well, thank you all. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye. All right. Um, I'm, I want to make sure, uh, is, is, is your name pronounced Mo Moise? Moishi? How do I? Moise. 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 Okay. All right, Moise, lovely to meet you. I see we also have Oscar and Victor. Okay. Um, so I uh, want to make sure everybody, uh, so we have the branch currently, the L10N branch for localization. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody had had a chance to um, clone that. And if you were able to start playing around with it, I, again, I was struggling with that TOML file. And in my local attempts to run a, a local Hugo server, I wasn't seeing the, um, I have that test uh, Spanish about page that I put in there and I wasn't seeing it accessible. So I'm, I'm still like learning the platform, but I wanted to make sure that you y'all at least had, um, had cloned it and had the ability to spin up a local server, either a Hugo server or doc, you know, using the doxy container or whatever the, mechanisms were, or if not, make sure that we get you the help you need so that you can um, 
get your translations in there. Yeah, on my side, I, I already found the, the repo and um, I try to set up the uh, on my local uh, local laptop on my local uh, computer. And uh, so far is not working. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what uh, what happened. It looks like uh, it's like a configuration. And also, uh, I use this um, uh, this issue to document how to set up uh, how to onboard when you try to config to to contribute uh, on the on the translation. So uh, on this um, on this website, if you need to contribute, so I'm documented, and uh, maybe I'm gonna create one uh, one page to explain how to set up your computer and uh, how to onboard it. Um, and uh, I got two people to contribute on it uh, in French, but uh, uh, last week I, I launched them, but uh, there is no reply. So I gonna try to. Oh, always the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, them. So uh, yeah. And, and just to be clear, so we have this page. I'll drop it in the Zoom chat, which had the contribution guides. So is that the the page that you're going to be updating? updating. With with your updates, because that would be fabulous if there's if this is insufficient or has inaccuracies. Um, okay. for for getting started with the platform. Yeah, I didn't go, I didn't find this. Okay. I, I just, I it just occurred know. to me that I probably should have explicitly called this page out and I did not, so my apologies. Okay, okay, I will try it, yeah, and let you know. Okay, I found, and, and, and to be, and just to, to be fair, like for me, I'm not sure what, Terry, which system that you're using, I found the most success doing the Hugo server version of it but there's like three different ways that you can do this and different people have have done different things with it so it's like pearl you know there's more than one way to do it yeah so we we need to make sure that uh we're on roughly similar versions of uh hugo and doxy uh because there are some incompatibilities uh, so i'm not sure um how the the docker image is being created and whether we're keeping it in sync with everything else. I suspect else. it's probably out of date and I should go look at that unless you happen to have time and a desire to do that. <laughs> well, we can uh, we can both have a dig around and see where we are with that. Okay. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't taken a peek at that. Okay. Um so yeah, Moise, if if you could take a peek and and then, you know, feel free to open PRs against that document for any additions that would be super helpful. Um, Oscar and Victor, how are you all going with your setup? Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet. I'm Oscar Cortez. I am new in the community and the process. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. Uh, no, I don't have configured never. Um, I I knew that my first meet with Lori was the, the Monday and I am Okay, so uh, you're, you're just looking at it. Okay. <laughs> yes, um, but I had a lot of the um, idea of the contributes to the Spanish translation in every report and in every project. I think in, we need um, a lot of information in the Continuous Delivery Foundation in Spanish. Uh, we need this information. Yes. And I can help for uh, I can help in the process of the translate. That would be awesome because my Spanish is poor. So I would definitely not consider my I, mean, but, I, but my my English is not better, but in the process I I I I want to improve my English and collaborate with a great project. Okay. All right. So um yeah, if you run into challenges setting up, you know, let's let's just make sure to drop the notes into the Slack channel. Um, okay. And, um, and, and if you want to go ahead, Moise, and put any changes to that contribution guide in the same branch, we can just all work in that branch um, and uh, and then start merging things over as we as we get to good points. Um, and uh, I, okay. I have limited availability, but I try and check the channel um, a couple of times a week, and I'll try to be better about it. Uh, and I know Terry keeps an eye on it periodically, so we'll try and get questions answered um, as you're progressing. 
Um, Victor, do you have any any challenges right now, or are you still setting uh, up? I have been tried. So actually, um, because I, I was uh, working on the, the translation of the uh, CNCF, the, the maturity model, have a translation work as well, as well. And then they actually have a, a way to um, have a separate language. You can add uh, like a add a language module and then uh, clone uh, clone a, add a language module and merge back all from GitHub itself. Uh, I can post that link. How, how is that done there? I think that might be, it, it's using, uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll post that in there. I see whether that's okay. an easy way to, to the merge the changes. Yeah, I, I, I'm certainly not an expert in doing this work. We, we played a little bit with Git Localize. That was not super successful. Um, you know, now we've kind of got a preliminary layout, um, but any any good suggestions that anyone has about how to make this process simpler and more sustainable, I, I think, you know, we'll definitely be interested in. Okay. So, and Victor, are, um, what language are you representing? Uh, Mandarin Chinese. Oh, Simpli sweet. Simplified Chinese, yeah. Okay. So French, Spanish, Chinese. Awesome. That's a good start. Is there any other key languages that you're hoping to identify, Fatih? I, like once this, you know, way of working settles, I will give a try to Turkish. Because Turkey is a bit lagging behind when it comes to continuous delivery. So I am also going to contribute. I am just observing to learn at nice. the moment. Yes, I think I think most of us are de definitely learning. Okay, cool. Um, okay, yeah, sorry. last time I saw on the I saw on the, the depot um, the slash uh, es uh, for the Spanish. Uh, is it the way to make a translation? So just uh, create a new uh, sub repository, stop uh, for that, and put the language inside there, or put all the, the website inside there. That so that was the that was the the formatting that I was following based on the the doxy documentation and you know setting up the config toml and all of that. But like I said, I'm still struggling a little bit to get to to get it to where I think it's working the way we expect. But it sounds like Victor may have another option that he'd like us to investigate, which I am totally open to. So if there's there's things that you've done that like hey doing it this way is going to make it really simple let's talk about that it, the the things that we have started I am not I personally and I don't think Terry is either you know a hundred percent like we must do it this way okay okay cool. a simple question Sarah um, um we had. And um, step by step or, uh, or a roadmap for the translation. What is the priority? What is the uh, the what the what documentation is the priority for the translation? I, I knew for for this, this. What is the the roadmap? Um, it's. I don't think we have anything formal. And as far as like you know, if you wanted to pick through all the content, as far as prioritization, I think the learn content is probably. The best place, um, you know, just kind of just start going through it. Um, okay. But in you know, anything helps, right? And hopefully, Perfect. it's organized in such a way that it's you know, as Terry pointed out, it's in in chunks that that hopefully make it easy, you know, easy to kind of bite things off in in reasonable yeah. amounts. I have posted the 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 um the GitHub um the issue at least related to how it was done in in that. Uh, right now it's only German. I, I already, I already actually posted the, uh, the the same thing. So basically, that uh, after cloning, uh, with this setup, after cloning the the, the original repo, uh, you'll be able to um, just uh, make a few changes, and you get a, uh, create a subdirectory for your uh, language, and, and this way, yes. yeah, you you don't have to uh, when it's com being committed, it'll commit the whole thing back into the main branch. Uh, this way, it's uh, it's a lot easier to merge different um, languages into uh, the original module. No need to make the uh, change to the to the original English version. Yeah, so so this way, it's a um, okay. Yeah. I, okay, I take uh, uh, access sample French and Chinese and follow this way. Is you? Is I, I think I think this is what we've actually got set up already. Yeah, I'm not. 
it, it looks similar, but. Um... Yeah, so, so you have, um, there's only a single language in here at the moment, which is English. Oh, there's, there's, um, what's DE? The, is, that, is that German? Dutch? What is DE? Well, already merge is German. Uh, I, I, I did English, uh, Chinese already, but uh, not, not merge yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the this looks very similar to what we were trying to do as far as the, the language definitions. Um, the, the thing that for me that wasn't working was once I was running the, the, the site locally on my laptop, you know, there, I couldn't find any any anchor that allowed me to switch the localization. So like, for example, you need to about, actually, you need to change the setup on the browser. So you, you need a plug in. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Switch, so it's you switch your browser. Okay. Cause I thought when I was, I, I must've misread the documentation. I thought it was going to give the, um, the ability to have, you know, the, the language switches that you see, the manual ones you see on, on some website, like news sites. So that's what I was, I was trying to figure out how to enable, but if that's not no, how what it, it should, works, what it should, what it should do is automatically serve you your default language as set in the browser. Okay. Um, and then I think it should fail back to, if, you know, if there's no translation it for an English, English content page, you should fail back to that. Right. Or whatever the top leading is, which should be English, right? Okay, so that was just me misunderstanding whatever that documentation was that I was reading. Okay, so I can go test that and make sure that that's no, I can't because that's all on my workstation that's at home. <laughs> all right, I'll have to set up a new environment on this laptop. Damn it, I'm three thousand miles away from home. No big deal. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, y'all are going to continue working on getting setups. We'll update the contri the contributors guide as necessary. I will set up my local environment. Yeah, let's get some yes. let's get some files landed, and we can check back in in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, all right, let me just capture notes. Any other topics we wanted to cover? Yeah, so the way that that uh, that group done, um, at least the, I did it that way, is uh, there's no need to set up anything on my laptop. I just I just on the GitHub, GitHub make a clone and make changes and merge back. Uh, all, all be in the GitHub. Um, okay. Well, I I, I definitely I, I think we want to be able to do both. Um, yeah. So so the only what you need the local setup for is so that you can actually. Um, test in yeah, the in the it. Hugo environment on your right. laptop. You can see what it's actually rendering as. Um, yeah, you can you can edit and push that push stuff, but um, I think and you you can obviously then look at the look at a PR and and check the PR version um, to 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 see if the preview is rendering correct. Uh, but it's just that little bit easier to be able to do it live on your local machine. So as you're editing, you can see the changes in a browser locally. And I think, you know, once we have more of the stuff in place, Victor, your your suggestion will become that much more useful because it won't require the overhead. But I suspect there's probably some, you know, since we're just getting going, being able to make sure we can test everything locally before the, the merges happen is going to be super helpful. I, I suspect we'll probably hit some rendering problems uh, where we're working in languages that are uh, in a different rendering sequence to uh, to the English we've got so far. So, yeah. so I expect we might get some layout bugs. If I remember the complaining from my doc teams back in the day, I do. I think you are correct. Um, example just capturing some notes here and then the other thing that we will need to think about shortly is a process for keeping the translations in sync with edits on the main document I'm wondering if it's something as goofy as just having a little like GitHub action that's like, oh, you just changed a thing and automatically creates, you know, 
corresponding language tasks as reminders or something. Yeah. Um, check uh, status of, all right, action items, check status of Docker container. To date, um, review contributor guide for correctness. Okay. Um, test local testing. Confirm. Okay. So check status the Docker container review, review contributor guide for correctness. Update is necessary. And then confirm for local testing um, that localizations uh, with browser setting updates work. All right, any other thing that our, our localizers need? No for me, thank okay. you. Sarah. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for contributing your time uh, to this effort, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, I will see you I think we can probably give you a few minutes back and we'll see you on the Slack channel. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh, Have a good one. Thank yeah. you. Bye.